Mario Party, the closest thing you can come to video game torture. It might be all colourful and smothered in Mario characters, but the shenanigans that unfold on a game-by-game -game basis will send you to either end of the emotional spectrum and back again. Thankfully, there exists parity in this blur of random number generator madness. Games that are mini. In order to split up the board game randomness, players are forced to play a mini game to win coins to spend being dicks to each other. While most of Mario Party is luck based down to it being a board game game, the mini games tend to be the only part that requires a modicum of skill. So as it turns out, I like them quite a lot. There's been some really fun mini games in the past. But of course, give Mario Party an inch and it won't thank you. For every good mini game, there's always a fair share of terrible ones too. Either poorly designed, wholeheartedly uninspired, or just luck based, these are the mini games that make giving coins to Bowser seem like a fantastic idea. And for this video, I'm looking at the most painful of the lot. Taking one from each console Mario Party game and excluding the entirely luck based mini games. I don't know, but the nature of Mario Party kinda desensitizes you to random occurrences. So those sorts of mini games aren't so bad in my eye. Anyway, we've got some atrocious interludes to look at. I'm gonna be honest here, of all the Mario Party games out there that I've played, Mario Party 6 maybe has the best collection of mini-games of all. Not to say they're all brilliant, but there's not too many that really aren't. So, with that in mind, let's play Russian Roulette with monkeys! Now, technically Strawberry Short Fuse isn't luck-based, so I can have it on the list, but it is a mini-game that will often end with random guesses and praying that no one else saw what you saw. The idea is to have 10 monkey chefs running around a kitchen, half of which are holding a slice of delicious strawberry shortcake available in all good bookstores today, while the other half are holding a slightly less delicious bomb. You obviously need to watch for the shortcase and avoid the explosives, and potentially have a backup plan when other people choose the shortcake you are watching. It doesn't start as a luck based minigame, but if you're on your second and third choice pick and not guessing at random, you've risen to a plane higher than all things Mario Party. Still, monkey chefs, I mean, I've heard of monkey butlers, but I don't want no monkey ass in my food. The scenarios that Mario Party brings up, I swear to god. Bumper Bubbles from Mario Party 9 doesn't make me all that angry. It just irritates the hell out of me. As a kickoff, it's a motion controlled minigame, which isn't so bad because the controls aren't too bad in Mario Party 9, but when the stakes are high, I'd rather be pressing buttons to be honest. The game itself is quite well balanced actually. You're stuck in a bubble along with three others, collecting balloons while avoiding giant spiky balls. The more balloons you get, the slower and larger you become, making it more of a challenge to not get popped. Should you get popped, you lose all your balloons which other players can then pick up, meaning you can spend the whole match in the lead and yet lose it right at the end. Which is only made worse by the other players. The other three people can, as the minigame is titled, bump into you and try and push you towards the spiky balls. Not so bad at the start of the game, but if you make it to the last seconds without being popped, your rivals will make sure you get popped. Gets pretty relentless at stages. So it's a minigame that encourages people to be dicks. And while that may be in the spirit of Mario Party, I'm still not convinced by a minigame where players can gang up on one player to get the best results. That's just mean-spirited. And Mario Party's never done any of that, right? I can't really have too many complaints about Candlelight Flight from Mario Party 4. For a start, Mario Party 4 was always my favourite for minigames. It had book squirm, dungeon duos and a whole load of great battle games. So while I could complain and rage about Candlelight Flight being the fly in an otherwise perfect ointment, it's actually not that bad? No, it's it's bad. It's it's very bad. It might be a 1 vs 3 minigame with 3 people chasing one person trying to put out their candle with super soakers, but it's honestly not as fun as it might sound. Put it this way, Super Soakers tend to be a tad... inaccurate. And at least Candlelight Flight accurately represents this in video game format. Sadly, that's not a good thing. You see, in order to balance this game, which you do kind of need to do, using the Super Soaker thing has you stopping in place and spraying. Only problem with this is that it then makes this minigame massively fiddly. You can't be all that precise of where you aim the water, and so the only way to win is to effectively set traps for the one player to run into. Which isn't very efficient when you need to hit the one player five times, or an average of once every six seconds. Put it this way, if someone's good enough as the one player, it's impossible to hit them. And when there's coins on the line, that's not the sort of trait I want in my Mario Party minigame.
Question. Can you count up to like 20 or so? You can? That's brilliant! You're gonna find Roll Call from Mario Party 2 a piece of cake! Seriously, what is this game and why? This is one of the easiest minigames you'll ever play if you bring some friends along. Your role is to count up the objects presented before you, be they toads, booze, whatever you like. It will try and trick you by adding a gimmick like how the boos disappear and reappear, but it doesn't make enough of a difference. But should you bring some friends along, you can either collaborate with them to win coins or just steal the answer off them, which is of course displayed where everyone else can see it. And sure, you can try and be tactical, but how tactical can you be with a counting game? Counting isn't all that difficult, guys. In a world where fortune favours the fortunate, where giant evil turtles can mean the difference between success and failure, only one minigame can save the world from utter destruction. Coming Spring 2015, prepare your lily pads for... Rudder Madness! It's impossible, it can't be done. It's one of the dullest minigames ever made. I'd rather go back to giving away all my worldly possessions to some asshole who landed on the right space. This isn't a good alternative. Taking the prize for most inappropriately named Mario Party minigame, Rudder Madness sees you guiding a lily pad down a muddy river, littered with rocks and opponents to bump into to hinder your progress. Sounds somewhat decent until someone tells you that you do all of this at literally a snail's pace. Maybe if the river's current was a little bit quicker, this might be a decent concept, but it's just so slow! And I'm sure you'd love to see something more interesting than four players creeping down a river, but that's just about all there is to it. Here, have an explosion. Infinitely more exciting. I need to go eat a chili pepper or something. You know what's hard? A rock. You know what's harder? Being creative. That's why after this I'm going to be making 17 countdowns about easter eggs! Oh, here comes the truly terrible minigames. You might be wondering, wow Nintendo, you people are so creative and stuff. How do you keep coming up with so many clever ideas for Mario Party minigames? No, none of that. Fuck that so hard. Cointagious from Mario Party 7 has made me question everything I thought I knew about Nintendo being creative. Oh yeah, let's have another new Super Mario Bros game until new means here's another. This minigame is the dictionary definition of uninspired drivel. It says something that I can show you a still screenshot of this minigame and you can fill in the blanks. Cointagious sees you hit a block, producing a random number between 0 and 3. This number then goes towards your score, and at the end of the game you get that number in coins. That's it, no jeopardy, no real tactics to speak of. Hell, it's probably a luck based minigame after all, but it's got far worse problems. Mario Party minigames are supposed to divide up the normal Mario Party gameplay and freshen it up, give you something else to concentrate on. And I'm fairly certain that there's no worse way to do that than effectively rolling dice blocks. Fucking dice blocks in a minigame. Throughout Mario Party minigame history, there's been minigames that are heavily stacked towards one side. Maybe a 1 versus 3 where the 1 is being chased by 3 giant mechs, or where the 3 have a much more complicated route to victory. Then there's Heatstroke. Every time I've played this minigame, not only have I never seen the 3 players win, I've never seen it last longer than 15 seconds or so. It's maybe the most one-sided minigame Mario Party's ever made, and that's saying a lot. The premise is to have one player with a hammer knocking platforms away, with the 3 players having to jump to avoid being swept away. And that's fine and dandy and shit, almost sounds balanced. But with just one action, this game becomes incredibly unbalanced. The one player can press B to fake swing and fake the three players out. Now they don't really know when you're going to knock a platform away. Now this game is unbalanced like fuck. The three players have eight platforms to survive, but it just can't be done. The best hope they have is for the one player to spend too much time fake swinging and running out of time, but all three players can fall off in one go. That's before the potables fall, knocking out anyone who touches them. It's just way too heavily weighted on one side. The one player can play either super aggressive or calm and conniving, but they'll pretty much always win. And I know Mario Party hasn't always been that keen on balance, but this is just too much. At least it's over and done with in less than 30 seconds or so, which, sadly, can't be said about what comes next.
I'll be blunt with this one. The Beat Goes On from Mario Party 3 has the most fitting name of all the fucking minigames ever made in anything. I guess I could have called it Shy Gay Drums or something stupid, but the name tells you everything about what goes on in this minigame. Because they're right, the beat indeed does go on. And on. And on. Until you start questioning the life choices you've made. The Beat Goes On is a free-for-all minigame that has each player trying to copy the drum beats that the Shy Guy plays, while adding one of their own to make the sequence longer and harder. <coughs> Each player in turn has to try and remember all the drum beats that came before without fucking up once. Should you manage to outlast all your opponents, you win. Should you make it to the end with another person, you fucking draw the game and get nothing for it. Which wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the fact that the game takes forever and a day to get through. Minigames in Mario Party pride themselves on being short, sharp little interludes that break up the flow of rolling a dice block and doing random events on a board. Not taking 10 minutes to remember some motherfucking drum boots for 10 measly coins. It's quicker, smarter and indeed less of a headache to just throw the game and give someone else the coins and move on with your life. Minigames in Mario Party of course have varying degrees of quality. Some are amazing, some are awful, but not many actually cause you any harm, apart from any mental anguish you might experience from taking it too seriously. It is Mario Party after all. That's because since Mario Party 1 for the N64, Nintendo have been in hot water about minigame injuries and have steered clear of them in every game since. Why? You know, I just can't quite put my finger on it. Oh wait. Ladies and gentlemen, the stupid control stick spinning minigames from the original Mario Party. This might be a bit of a cop out because they're pretty famous by now, but these select minigames are some of the absolute worst in the series by a distance. People often have a go at button mashing in video games, but do you know what's worse? Replacing the button with a solid plastic grooved control stick. Nintendo maybe thought that people would spin the control stick around with their thumb or finger perhaps. Fuck no! You can go much faster by mashing it with the palm of your hand. Never mind that a lot of kids ended up with rashes and craters in the middle of their hands, causing countless lawsuits and Nintendo being forced to issue gloves, at least you outspan your friends and drag them into a piranha plant's mouth. I fucking earned those five coins, bro. I can use them to pay for the fucking surgery. This has been Rabbit Luigi, and I hope this has taught you a lesson about Mario Party. Leaves may fall, time may flow, but if you give Mario Party an inch, and that inch shall be inserted upon your person pretty fucking quickly. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This top 9 actually brings Mario Month to a close, so I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry to anyone who was expecting Zelda Month this year, but I felt that I needed to freshen it up occasionally. As for what comes next, I'm actually in the process of moving house, so it could be a little while before you see anything from me. There's always Twitter and Facebook where I'll be posting updates as I go. But for now at least, I'll see you when I see you. Take care guys.